Hey, welcome to 49cc Scoop. My name's Brent. I've heard numerous times since owning the RC1 engine that Melosi's MHR exhaust that comes with it is not the greatest. I've heard it described anywhere from it's okay to it's weak, but no one seems to be singing its praises. I've been pretty happy with it so far, but I had to wonder if a different exhaust would make the RC1 even stronger than it already is. So today, I'm going to try a new pipe. In the last video, where I installed a Polini high-speed variator and belt, I told you that I got the advice from a friend, Ryan, who was advised by someone on a Yamaha Zuma group that that would make the RC1 faster. The same person also suggested a different exhaust. Ryan actually bought an Auto Puntano pipe, sorry, I'm probably butchering that name, uh, but directly from that person who claimed that it was a one-off custom exhaust made for a 94cc or maybe even specifically for the RC1. Ryan installed all of the parts at one time in his new Honda Metruck build, which you'll see riding with me in future videos. It's a long, low scooter set up to better handle power without being wheelie prone like the Zuma that he had the RC1 in. He definitely got quicker and faster, but it's hard to say what's doing what because all of the mods were installed at once and because he now has the ability to get into the throttle without putting the wheel in the air. Now his problem is traction, leaving 20 foot black streaks behind him and it's been over 90 miles per hour without him really trying to top it out. Ryan was kind enough to share some onboard video with us. So clearly his setup goes well, and that left me trying to figure out which pipe I wanted to try, because the pipe that he got is not available to my knowledge. It seems like all of the exhausts meant for more power on the RC1 are actually intended for 100cc flange mount builds rather than the standard configuration. And at the time, I wasn't clear that his exhaust is supposed to be a one-off pipe and not just an off-the-shelf auto 100cc pipe. I primarily looked at the auto, too fast, and stage six exhausts, all made for their 100cc cylinder and crank combo. I wound up deciding to try the stage six RTFL100 exhaust, thinking that this way I could try something a little bit different rather than just getting the auto exhaust. He had also mentioned that the auto was louder than the Melosi pipe and had a short silencer, and the stage six pipe appeared to have a longer silencer that I assumed would make less noise. The other part of my thought process was that of all the options that I considered, I'd be the most likely to want the Stage 6 RT cylinder and crank in the future. So even if the pipe didn't work out for me right now, maybe I'd use it one day if I do a different build. ScooterTuning.ca didn't list this pipe on their site, but I got in touch and they told me that they could get this pipe for me and they'd give me a good price. If you didn't already know, ScooterTuning.ca gives me a discount on parts in exchange for mentioning them in my videos. They've always been a great company to deal with, so this was really a no-brainer for me, and I've appreciated their support so far, and it has allowed me to try parts that I probably wouldn't have otherwise. If you need scooter parts of any kind, go check out ScooterTuning.ca. They've got fast, affordable shipping and a wide selection of parts, from stock to high-end racing, and you'll be doing business with a company that supports the scooter community. Here's an unbagging of the exhaust. It comes with two of these decals. The main body of the exhaust, which we'll take a really good look at because in my opinion, brand new high-end pipes are a thing of beauty. It comes with a long silencer with a carbon fiber cover. This is the Stinger with a silencer mount. I noticed when looking at exhaust for the 100cc flange mount kits that all of them use a bolt-on Stinger now. I'm not really sure what the big benefit is. It allows more flexibility when mounting because it can be rotated, but I'm not sure if that's it or if there's some performance or durability reason. 
If you know, please leave a comment. Here's the mounting bracket with vibration isolators. This is the clamp for the silencer that you'll need to bend yourself. Don't worry, it's easy. The silencer gasket, nuts, and washers. And then the rest of the hardware. I also had to order the flange kit for this pipe because the flange is usually included with the cylinder kit, which I don't have. That comes with an O-ring for the flange to the cylinder connection, mounting hardware, and the flange itself. Now it's time to get the pipe installed. The first step for me was to remove the Melosi exhaust and flange. I cleaned the exhaust outlet on the cylinder with carburetor cleaner and also wiped off the two-stroke crud in surrounding areas. The bolt pattern on the Stage 6 flange is different from the Melosi cylinder's outlet. Luckily, it can be rotated and used with just two bolts and the alignment with the port is okay. It would be nice to use all four bolts, but most kits that aren't high-end only have two bolt flanges. The Stage 6 flange has a round entry to match its corresponding cylinder's round port exit, while the Melosi flange transitions from an oval port match shape to round where it meets the header. I would prefer to have the port match and the transition of the Melosi flange, but the Melosi flange is larger than the Stage 6 header. I considered getting another Melosi flange and seeing if I could machine it down and then use that so I'd have both port matching and the use of all four bolts. But when I saw that it would probably cost over $100 by the time the flange is shipped, I just gave up on that idea. Another thought was to get a chunk of steel rod, machine it to the appropriate outside diameter, and bore it as large as I could on the mini lathe before welding it to a flange cut from probably 8th inch or 3 16th steel and then hand porting it. With material cost and the amount of effort involved in something like that, it may just be worth buying the flange and cutting the OD down. I decided that if the pipe turned out to work well, then maybe it would be worth figuring out a better flange, but not before some testing. I started the flange bolts and left them just loose enough that I could still move the flange. Then I moved the flange around to align it as well as I could before tightening. Next, I used the supplied hardware to bolt the bracket onto the engine leaving the bolts loose enough for adjustment. I pushed the pipe onto the header and it became immediately apparent that the bracket was not going to work. The tabs on the pipe are supposed to align with the isolators, but they are inches off. The Stage 6 RT100 FL cylinder would put the exit at a different angle, so the exhaust probably bolts up with ease if you happen to have their cylinder, but it's not working so well with a Melosi jug. It's so far off that drilling new holes in the bracket isn't even an option, so I decided to make my own. I traced the bracket's basic shape and used it to mark the engine mounting hole. I cut slots to allow adjustment just like stage 6 did before bolting the template on and cutting it to a rough shape. Then I marked where the pipe aligns and cut out slots for those mounts as well. I bolted the template on and made sure everything seemed to align. It looked pretty good to me, so I transferred the design to a piece of 8th inch steel plate before cutting and drilling it. Since I didn't bend my bracket to the mounts on the engine like stage 6 did, I had to cut a spacer on the lathe for the bracket to sit straight. Finally, everything aligned well. 
Before I could bolt the pipe on, I still needed to install a bung for an exhaust gas temperature sensor. I took some measurements so I'd know how far into the pipe I'd need to go to place the sensor 150 millimeters from the piston skirt and then cut a piece of wire to that length. Then I could place the wire on the pipe to plan and mark exactly where I wanted to put the EGT. I used a vacuum to help me keep debris out of the pipe while drilling and deburring the hole. Two strokes will pull things back into the cylinder, so you really don't want anything left over in there. Yes, I know my welds are terrible, but it doesn't leak, so it's fine. Then the sensor was installed. If you want in-depth info about installing EGT sensors, I've got a video that covers the entire process in detail, and I'll link to that in the description. Once the sensor was installed, the pipe was bolted on. I could only get one of the header springs installed because there wasn't enough clearance for the spring to go through near the head on the other side, so I had to use a different spring that I had on hand that's a little bit thinner. This little piece goes into the end of the exhaust before the stinger goes in. I left the clamp loose enough that the stinger could still rotate. I ended up having to take one mount bolt back out because it turns out that it needs to go through this silencer clamp bracket. The silencer was installed on the stinger next. The clamp was bent around the silencer and then the stinger was rotated until the clamp aligned with a stud on the bracket. Then, everything previously left loose was tightened, the EGT sensor was connected, and the exhaust installation was finished. Of course, we absolutely have to listen to the new pipe before moving on. It's quieter than I expected, which isn't a bad thing in my opinion. Now the part that I was waiting for, testing and tuning. I was eager to find out how much quicker I could go after hearing that the pipe I've been using is allegedly weak. I started out with 5.25 gram weights in the variator, which has worked well with a Melosi exhaust, and worked my way down to 4.25 grams in quarter gram increments, and here are the results. It did the best with 4.5 gram weights, but all of the eighth mile results are close, and the best and worst results are only 13 hundredths of a second apart. Zero to 60 shows a little bit wider spread, with 4.5 gram being a quarter second quicker than the nearest result, and roughly three quarters of a second quicker than the worst result. The problem is, all of the results are slower than my best results with a Melosi pipe. Here's the best set of runs with a stage 6 exhaust versus the best set of runs with a Melosi exhaust. It's not way off, but it's two tenths worse on average in the eighth mile and a little worse across the board. I would say that what I felt matches the data pretty well. With a stage 6 exhaust, it didn't feel like much changed other than RPM when I was going up or down with different weights and it didn't feel much different than the Melosi pipe. It looks like the Stage 6 pipe has a wider usable range. From past results with a Melosi, I see a much more obvious fall off in performance as the RPM moves away from the best results. The Stage 6 pipe is more willing to rev as well, 
I ran it up to near 15,000 RPM at one point and it didn't really feel unhappy there. Overall, I'd say it's a good exhaust, even not being designed specifically for the 94cc MHR combo, and I really think that's the issue here. The Melosi MHR exhaust is designed specifically for the kit that I'm using, and the Stage 6 exhaust is not. I suspect that a version of the Stage 6 exhaust made for the Melosi kit would be an excellent pipe, but unfortunately I don't think that exists. I know there are a few different high-end pipes for 94cc Minarelli engines, but I'm not aware of others made for the RC1. Putting a 100cc exhaust on a 94cc may not seem like a big deal, but two-stroke pipes are incredibly sensitive to variables and everything needs to be dialed in for the strongest performance. Speaking of dialed in, I should mention that I never changed any carburetor settings. I watched and recorded exhaust gas temperature and it was right on par with data from my previous best runs. At this point, I was a day away from an upcoming car show and wanted to make sure the Scoot was running strong. I did check and see that it could still power wheelie from a 25 mile per hour roll with a stage 6 pipe and briefly considered going with it just because near 15,000 RPM power wheelies seem more aggressive than near 14,000 RPM power wheelies. But ultimately, I decided to put the Melosi exhaust back on for the strongest performance. I did make one small change when I reinstalled the Melosi exhaust. The countersink mount bolts included from Melosi have small hex sockets and have never been able to withstand the recommended torque settings without stripping for me. I made up a couple of tapered inserts on the lathe that fit inside of the bracket and now I can use standard Allen cap screws or just plain old hex bolts if I want to. This doesn't self-center quite so much as the tapered bolts, but if the ID of the inserts is kept close to the bolt size, it seems to work just fine. I installed a new spark plug and set the CVT back to what works with the Melosi pipe and after a couple of quick test runs I was ready for the car show. Make sure you're subscribed and have notifications turned on so you can check out the next video of a little fun at a car show and all of my future videos. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful I'd appreciate a like. Thank you for watching.